Okay, so this is the class for engineering dynamics. So some of you, you already familiar with my teaching style. Some of you, if you are in my engineering material class, then you should familiar how I teach. Uh, some some slides I'll go very fast. Things that you can read from the slides I'll go very fast, uh, and I will emphasize on the focus area, uh, especially when they related to your test one, test two, and final exam. Okay, uh, those coming late one, I need to emphasize one thing. Uh, there's a ground rule in my class. Huh? you come in ten minutes late. Uh, 10 minutes after the scheduled time, you consider late. Huh? You come in half an hour, I consider you absent, huh? although you are physically in the class. You still can attend the class physically, but I will mark you absent after you, you start the class half an hour. I will mark you absent. All right? And you get need to get 80% attendance to sit for your final exam. And I already explained how to calculate the 80% in our system. Okay? So there's no reason you don't know or you question hey, why I, I, I bar from final exam, right? So there is a lab session for this module. So um, there's no lab uh, it may, uh, until week four or week five, right? So I did explain how the lab works. So those uh, chem late one, please go and ask your classmate. Huh? Uh, and I don't like to repeat my lecture, okay? Yeah. So. Uh, one reminder for lab, make sure you have a cover shoes every time uh, you come into the lab. Okay, so you wear slippers, then uh, you need to go out and find or loan, go and uh, talk to your friend and you wear their shoes uh, in the lab. Okay, so there are four learning outcomes for this module. Uh, why this learning outcome is important? This is the way we design question in test one, test two, and final exam. So there are four learning outcomes. First, you learn about some equation about motion in particle dimension. So this will be, uh, then CL2 will be more on the laws, Newton laws, energy law, principle, energy for particles. These two, CL1, CL2 will appear in question one, test one, CL2 will appear in question two, test one. So this one, CL1, CL2 will come out in your test one. CL3, you apply equation for kinematic carbon for rigid body. The first two will focus on, as a, we, we view them as a particles. What I mean by particles means um, the, this, uh, the, the effect of mass will not be significant or the cooling of gravity will not be significant when it comes to particles problems. However, when it comes to LO3, when we look at rigid body, then you need to consider individual particles like head is head, hands is hand, body is body, leg is legs. Okay, but when you learn about particles, everything you consider as one body. Okay, so there's a difference between particles and rigid body. Yeah? So, CL3, this one will come up in your test two, question one. CL4, you learn about same thing, Newton laws, principle, blah, 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 about rigid body. This one will be in your test two, question two. So test one will have two questions, question one, question two. Test two also have two questions, question one, question two. For your final exam, LO1 will have final exam question one. This one will be question two, question three. This one will be question four and question five. Pick one. Three compulsory. This one you pick one. Clear? Okay. So, as same as the uh, other module that I teach, let's say this is a question. One question will be 25 marks. You have section A, section B, section C. Section A, normally you need to draw diagram. For this module, you need to know how to draw free body diagram. If you're very weak in statics, please go and flip the static notes before you come to dynamics. Huh? So, but later, you, I will still give you some review or revision about what is, what is the difference between static and dynamics. Uh, but we are focusing very, very 
uh, lots of portion in free body diagram or free body diagram. I will use short form FBD. And free body diagram is very important. Huh? This one will cost you seven to eight marks just to draw the diagram. Huh? Then section B will do analysis. Means the formula A plus B equals C. Okay. So B will be do the analysis. Here will give you um, maybe B or C will be the same. You, C will be explaining how or why or direction of motion. Means you calculate one value at B, you need to explain what does this value means to you. If you calculate the value is positive or negative, what does it mean? Does it able to achieve the certain target? For example, you throw a pen to a certain distance. You calculate the projectile. Then will the bullet hit the target or not? Here you need to explain by with the answer here. If you do not calculate, you do not calculate section B, you straight away you give the answer cannot reach or cannot uh, cannot cannot meet the objective, you don't have marks here. You need to calculate, then you explain. That is how I mark your answer. Okay, so basically there will be, here will be seven to 12 marks accordingly, uh, but you add up all will be 25 marks. Okay, sometimes here is 10 marks, here is 15 marks. And if you do not know how to draw free body diagram, basically the analysis will be wrong. Okay, especially when it comes to friction force. Okay, now for this module, before we bring forward, you need to have knowledge in statics engineering or statics. Okay, you need to know how to draw free body diagram. Second, you need to have know how to do integration. Integration. You need to do dy, dx differentiation. Okay, so these are the skill set that you need to have before you go into dynamics. So if you are not good in integration, you're not good in inter, uh, uh, differentiation and integration, please do revision in these two weeks. Okay, because I have no time to go deep into the mathematics things. And also, statics also, um, uh, in some case, we only apply maybe 50% of your statics. Okay, static means the thing do not move. Okay, but when it comes to engine dynamics, the things is moving. So the energy, the motion, the forces are different. Okay, so that's why the mathematics skill here is important. Huh? Okay. So um, my room is in level five, uh, C122. So you go to a level five. Uh, you look into the door window. Uh, the the room with the green screen at the back is my my room lah. Okay, it's it's around at the center inside the uh, walkway. Eh? My consultation hours will be during the lunch time, twelve to one. So if you if you need to come and see me, uh, please uh, WhatsApp me. Eh? so for attendance, please write your handphone on the left hand side of the okay please help me to write your your phone number at the side of the names huh, here so I later I add you in the whatsapp group huh? right um canvas all the information are there so those are familiar with how I teach already familiar how I do those that are new in my class uh, please lock in canvas uh, they are tutorial question in every um, in every chapter chapter that we go through. Huh? So you go to in the canvas, let's say chapter one, you will see tutorial chapter one inside canvas. So why there is a tutorial question there? Because some of us we like to write something when we learn. 
right? Maybe you are psychomoto kind of learners. So the tutorial question will help you to write something during the lecture, okay? And the question inside there is uh, synchronized with my PowerPoint slides. So it will be very helpful for those uh, you are psychomotor learners. Uh, those you are audio, you are visual learners, you have no problem. You come to class, you listen, you should be able to learn effectively. Uh, and then those, uh, if you want to practice more, you can listen back to all the recorded uh, video. Okay, all the session will be recorded. Um, okay. Uh, unless I'm sharing some information uh, that cannot be recorded, then I will do it offline. Okay. Okay. Now, the percentage of uh, assessment will be 40% coursework, 60% final exam. So I already explained about how I set the question for final exam already. Five question, three compulsory, choose one question in question four or question five. Okay. For coursework, you have two tests. One test will be in week seven, one test will be in week 13. Uh, that individual assignment, this one, um, the question already in the canvas, you click the assignment, the question already there. Uh, but basically, this will be the bonus mark for all of you. Basically, this individual assignment, if you look carefully, the question already is discussed in the class, huh? will be discussed in the class. So just be careful on the answer that you put inside the assignment. Because sometimes in my class, I purposely put the wrong answer in my PowerPoint slides and I'll ask you what is wrong with my solution. So don't copy blindly yeah, from my PowerPoint slides. Okay. Um, and then there's a lab report 10%. It will be a lab report. So there are a few experiments. And also lab report the detail, the lab sheet, everything was inside the canvas also. So you can access uh, the, the format of the rubrics and so on in the canvas, right? So uh, then we'll break into groups. Huh? Normally it will be three student, one group. Depends on the total size of the class, okay? Any question? Ah, and then for final, you need to score 40% out of 100. What does it mean? You answer four questions. Each question, we expect you to score 10 mark, 10 mark, 10 mark, 10 mark. Out of 100, you get 40 out of 100. Okay, now it's rarely you can fail in final. Why? I already explained the structure, how I designed the question. If you're able to draw the figures correctly, you already passed the module already. Because the figure will sure give you about 10 marks. Or some maybe 8. And then you do, you, you, you write the general equation for B get two marks there. So normally you'll pass. Three body diagram plus the general equation. You will pass the module. You answer four questions. It will be exactly the same structure. Okay? Uh, it will be the same uh, for test one, test two also. You will be following this structure. Huh? Okay. So, and then the total marks is you add coursework plus final. So basically you'll pass this module. Why? Final exam, you already know the structure, how I asked. Uh, you pass here already. So here you get 40. Here you get uh, 40 means uh, 24 marks here. Then uh, here uh, you get 40 assignment. Maybe you have some error, you copy some wrong answer, maybe eight here. Let report the worst one. If you can go wrong one, uh, this one, let report can go wrong. The worst one, maybe seven marks out of 10. You want to have a good report, nine marks, then put in citation, give me more photo, more graph, and then discuss about the results, okay? Then you have a high score for your lab report, uh, okay? If you just copy the lab sheet, you'll get five marks out of 10 without any analysis. You copy and you submit, uh, you get five out of 10. As long as you submit, you have some score. Lah, okay? um, test, normally you, you'll pass, uh, you'll get half of the marks if you start this, right? So those inside, uh, okay, in my, in my class, before the test, I'll give you the scope. So it's your part to do the study. I'll give you very specific area, how I ask. So you don't just guess uh, or predict how I ask you the question. It will not be the same as the tutorial question I give you but it will be the same concept. 
Okay. Uh, any question on the assessment? Clear? Clear? Okay. All right. So this will be the textbook uh, that I use. But basically, my slide is sufficient for your revision, right? Uh, every time after the class, you ask yourself, do I understand what the lecturer is saying? Or do I, can I solve the tutorial question? If you're able to solve, means you understand already. You're ready for the test, okay? Right. First, we look at a few terms. What mean by engineering dynamics? So engineering dynamics, uh, engineering mechanics, you have two dimensions. You already study statics. Statics, you always learn about one equation. All the force equals zero in statics. All the moment equals zero. You learn about this one in statics, right? So, and then you move with constant velocity. You always have V equal to 10 meter per second, 20 meter per second. This is what you see in statics. However, when you learn about dynamics in this module, this will not be equal to zero anymore. Velocity will not be equal to constant value anymore. That will be the difference. Huh? So this one is concerned with equilibrium of the body that is either rest or move with accelerated motion. Dynamics, you deal with acceleration A. So we will move slowly. Uh, we focus on acceleration or ather accelerated uh, bodies. Huh? Okay. Uh, there's one word you will, you keep saying the word kinematics means is is deal with how the motion uh, the body moving. And also another one is called kinetics. Uh, there's a kinematics and kinetics. There are two two different words. But anyway, if you mess up these two in this module, I'll also give you correct answer. Basically, they are, they, they are the same procedure when you when you do the, the things. Huh? Uh, kinetic means it will cause, you deal with the force. Huh? You deal with the force. These two words, you will come into the application when you deal with the free body diagram later. Now, these are the, the SOP or the standard steps for this module. If you follow these steps, you should be able to solve the question very, very fast. Okay. I'll give you all the answer. First, you read the question. Uh, in this module, you read the question, you already know exactly what is this question related to. For example, you read the question, or oh, this one is chapter two question. So chapter two question have very specific equation that you need to use. So for example, test one, I'll give you, uh, okay, test one, maybe it will cover chapter one until chapter three. So you only consider chapter one until chapter three question. Once you read the question, you know this is chapter one question. So when it's chapter one question, you apply chapter one question equation only. You don't mess with other chapter, okay? Uh, diagram means you, you read the diagram. Sometimes you see graph and so on. Your test one, you deal with graph. Final exam, also question one, you deal with graph. Okay. Um, coordinate system is very important. What I mean by coordinate system? Moving to the right is positive, we label as Z. Going up Y, going up is positive. Moving up from the screen will be Z of Z positive coming up from the. So in this module, if your answer is positive, means you're referring to the axis system that we normally do. Okay. Uh, so if you get positive, means uh, you need to refer to your reference. Uh, before we start anything, I just give you know in this module because we are dealing with motion, my positive direction I will deal with motion. For example, a car. Car, right? Normally, moving to the right is positive. But if this car, the velocity moving to the left, I will put left is as my positive. That is the way that you see in dynamics question. When you do in statics, everything will fix for you. But for dynamics, you need to focus on the motion. 
Okay. Of course, you can still apply positive to the right. It's positive, but it will mess up your calculation later. You will see negative, but you need to convert back because the last question will always ask you what happened to the object based on your calculation. So if you are not consistent with your positive negative, the way you put, then you will confuse with your answer. Okay, so for dynamics, focus on the motion. Right. As we go deeper, you will have this skill set, right? You will automatic know, okay, where is positive? Okay. But for the first few, uh, chapter one, chapter two, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, maybe you can still use to the left is positive, going up positive, moving up is uh, positive. Okay. Okay, we start a little bit on the on the theories. Okay. There are a few motions in the dynamics. First is called straight line motion. It's called rectilinear motion. Later, when you go into complex cases, you go like that. It's a curvature motion, right? But later we come into this. We look at the very simple case first, which is will be covered in your test one, question one kind of question. So when you have a particle move in a straight line, first steps always you draw the diagram and then you you draw a straight line for rectilinear motion. We we'll always mark with O or zero as your reference starting point, initial point. It's very important for dynamics question. Where is the origin? So in this case, O is the origin, and this particle move from this point to one point that is maybe unknown or known, depend on the question. Okay. So how do we define or quantify the position in dynamics? So we have three things to deal with the rectilinear motion. They look at their position with the X, Y, and Z. And as you go deeper, you will have six dimension. You will deal with anger, right? Velocity and acceleration, okay? And again, statics, you have a constant value. Now you need to switch your learning style. When you study dynamics, you need to consider the changes of velocity and acceleration, okay? Now, the first, first parameter that we look is S. We call it, uh, okay. Um, for this dynamics, uh, all the arrows or forces or velocity or acceleration, they are vector. They are vector. So in your mathematics, you learn about vector, right? Vector have what? Magnitude plus direction. The length of the arrow represents magnitude. The direction arrow, the, the, the base to the arrow head is the direction of the vector. Okay. So the calculation of the vector also needs feedback, uh, like uh, vector A plus vector B equal to C. So how do you do it uh, in the diagram form or in the mathematics form? How to find the magnitudes of the two vector and so on. So this one you need to be kept. Uh, right. So position is a vector again. Uh, basically all the parameter as a uh, forces, motion, uh, moment, velocity, acceleration. Basically you can say 90% of the parameter you do in this module is a vector. So first we label as S, we call it displacement. Okay. So um, try not to confuse length and displacement. There's a different. Huh? So this displacement is a change in its position. We use S. Okay. So if you see S prime or something A or A prime, you see the prime symbol, it means 
the second position. If you see A prime prime or A comma comma, it means the third position and so on. Okay, so of course there will be some adjustment accordingly. But in this case, you see S prime, it represent the second position. So delta S equal to the end position minus the initial position. Okay, so it should not be any complex equation here. So the first equation for the today is how to find the displacement. Displacement, you take the initial, uh, the end position minus the uh, the initial was uh, initial distance that it travel. Okay, this is called displacement. They are vector quantity again. Uh, just a reminder, it's a vector. This one. So now we are in the linear collinear. Uh, uh, we are in the rectilinear motion. Uh. Very, very simple case. It will be different when you learn about curve motion later. Okay, so we deal with a very simple theory first. So first is the displacement, delta S. So next one, we deal with velocity. Velocity and I label to the right is positive. Okay. We deal with average velocity. So in your mathematics or physics class, you know how to find velocity, right? You take delta S divided by delta T. So your V average is delta S divided by delta T or change of displacement divided by the change of time. In this module, sometimes this one also represent uh, differentiation. Differentiation of displacement towards time. Yeah, so I uh, need to give you some reminder about the uh, equation. Huh? So don't don't uh, don't just, just sometimes you see this one yeah divide, but it can also means differentiation. Okay, first is called average. Now why do we use average? The word average there, because in dynamics, the velocity is not constant. The velocity is not constant. In meaning, as the particle move along the way, the velocity might be changing. So we take the average from one point to another point, we use the word average. Okay. Another word is called instantaneous. Instantaneous means you, 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 like you, you are playing a movie and you press the pause button. You're looking at the exact time at that point. What is the velocity at that point? Okay. So you need to uh, look carefully at the question, especially when, when it comes to your test one. Test two and the final exam. You need to be careful. One, the question either asks you average velocity or instantaneous velocity. Instantaneous, you need to recall uh, how you calculate instantaneous. You take the average velocity, but you limit the changes of time, means you freeze the time. This is an equation, like mathematical equation, the limitation that you learn in your. Max two or max three, I forget again. Right. So this one is just you freeze the time. You pause, press the pause button, right? So you change the delta to d. The mean, the 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 symbol of delta means there's a small changes of time that you sometimes you unable to to calculate using uh using instruments. It's very, very small, zero point zero 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 one second, for example. Very, very small. So when you pause it, you can change the equation from delta to d. D means something that you can measure, something that you can, uh, uh, yeah, measure with the instruments. Okay, things that you can quantify. So instantaneous, it become d s d t. Again, when you see d s d t, recall differentiation concept already. Okay. You know dy dx, right? Ah, okay. So, uh, do you need me to uh, refresh how to do differentiation? No need. Ah, uh. Okay. Why? 
y equal to 2x square plus 3, dy, dx. So what you do, 2 remain, move the 2 to the front, x, this one, 2 minus 1. Okay, this one becomes 0. Every time in this module, you'll be tricked by the constant value in the equation. Every time you see there's a constant value, you need to differentiate straight away the answer is zero. Okay, so this one become 4x. Dy dx become 4x, okay? So this is how you do. So when you do dv dx, it's actually is a differentiation of distance and time. So uh, I will give you an example uh, shortly. So instantaneous velocity given you by V equal to ds dt. This is a differential equation. It's not a normal uh, division kind of question. Two average velocity and instantaneous velocity. And then there's an S, the delta S is uh, displacement. So here, again, I highlight this one. Direction is important. Positive, in this case, I mark in the free body diagram there. Positive to the right. So if you do your answer, you get positive like this one. Your, your, your object is moving to the right. Velocity vector to the right is positive. Make sense? Make sense, yeah? Okay. Now, if you use the velocity, is a vector. If you use the scalar or magnitude of the velocity, we use the word speed. Okay, speed is meter per second. So what does it mean? It means if you use vector, velocity, this is vector, right? Vector have what? Magnitude plus direction. So it's velocity, the value that you use is a speed, direction, in this case, positive to the right. So for this module, every time you answer for a specific question, remember to write in this format. For example, write the magnitude plus draw the arrow, where is your positive, where is your direction? Because the parameter is a vector or the value that you find is a vector. Make sense? Okay, so, uh, so that is the, the way you, how you, how you score some points there. And of course, you say, uh, sir, can, uh, do we need to always write the arrow? The answer is no. As long as your free body diagram, you label clearly. For example, in this case, you label in your free body diagram to the right, you write, you draw an arrow, you write positive. You don't need to write this. You don't need to draw arrow at the answer. As long as I, I see positive value here, I know that you are following your free body diagram. All right? Okay, nah? All right. Unless the question purposely put there specifically asks you, put your answer uh, with direction. Then you write magnitude, then you draw, you, you just bracket and then draw arrow to whatever is positive in your diagram. Okay. We're done with velocity. Okay. Now, just now we, we deal with two terms, right? Average velocity and average uh, instantaneous velocity. Now, what is the difference between average speed with the velocity? Again, speed is a, is a scalar or it's a magnitude. So it's a scalar, average speed is a scalar. How you find the average speed? You take total distance traveled divided by time. This one you cover in statics module. Okay. In this module, we don't look at 
total distance, uh, some question we have, but most of the time we look at magnitude of the vector. Okay, so uh, this is just to highlight to you what is the difference between vector of velocity and speed. If you talk about average speed, it means you take the total distance traveled by the particle divided by time. Okay, and then I give you one example. So you have two equations here. One is average velocity, which is in vector form, is the displacement divided by time. Average speed is a total distance divided by time. So I let I, I give you a diagram here. A particle start from origin, reach uh, position, reach this position, p. Why this one is uh, because you see the diagram p pre comma right? P comma means the second position. So it move here and then it move back. So if you calculate accordingly, the total distance traveled by the particles will be the st uh, diagram. So average speed, if you calculate, average speed will be ST divided by the time travel. But the average velocity will be negative delta S. Why negative? Because moving to the right is positive. This particle move back to your reference axis. It move back to the left. That's why your Calculation here, straight away you put negative because it moved to the left and not to the right. And this is the vector. Okay, vector has magnitude and direction. Okay, divided by time. So that there's a total different answer between these two. So don't get confused with your static chapter or static module with dynamics. In this, in this, in this module, you deal with vector most of the time. Which is very important for this today uh, lesson is that um, the way you answer question you need to change a little bit compared to the statics. Okay, you deal with the vector. Remind yourself that vector have magnitude and direction, and you need to very clear in your free body diagram where is the positive direction. Is it moving up positive, moving down negative? Again, my recommendation when you answer your question for dynamics, always look at the object, where does it move? And then follow the motion, put the motion direction as a positive. Then your answer will get all positive answer. You will not confuse, hey, here is negative, there is negative here. So you make your, your, your answer very, very neat and clean. And you, will know, and you won't confuse. Right, that is my recommendation. Huh? But you still want to follow the static way also correct. Means you always put the left is positive. Also can, but you'll see the different uh, set of answers. You still get the same, same answer. It's just that the way you answer it will be different. Okay. Uh, so for example, this, mo this, this car moving to the right. And if the answer, if the answer that you're finding is V, let's say is 10, meter per second is positive moving to the left if you look at this object but you're following this one since the beginning if you are following this one the same car your answer will be negative 10 meter per second and your direction will be positive this way You see, the, it's the same answer, but different presentation. Makes sense. Makes sense, yeah? Okay. Stop me uh, if you're unable to, to follow. Uh. Okay. Then, acceleration. Uh, this is just a recap of your physics class. Acceleration, again, is a vector, but you can take the concept of physics to solve this question. Acceleration is we deal with velocity. And not speed, huh? we deal with velocity, which is a vector. So V is the initial velocity, V comma or V prime is a velocity after the previous velocity. And the arrow of A will follow the direction of the velocity. 
A is acceleration. So in this case, we look at average acceleration. Again, uh, there are two, two uh, important uh, parameters. One is average, one is instantaneous. Uh. If you work, see the word instantaneous means you need to do differentiation and then you do integration because you pause the thing. Uh. You pause the thing, you need to do it differentiation and then you need to calculate. You pause play, pause play, pause play. You need to do integration to see the whole motion, what happened to the whole motion. So that's why you do integration here. Okay, so uh, we'll deal with this one later. Huh? So average, average acceleration, as you learn in your physics, you take velocity, uh, sorry, uh, you take velocity divided by time. And this one is a delta, means very, very small changes. So you apply the same mathematics procedure. You take instantaneous uh, acceleration, you apply the limitation in the calculation, you'll get dv dt, okay? dv dt. So there are two important equation for today, eh? for this one hour lesson. What is the definition of velocity? V equal to ds dt. Acceleration equal to dv dt. This is a two important equation for today. Okay. And if it's positive, means the, the, the particles, now we are at the particles. Huh? The particles move to the right according to the free body diagram. So you can derive this equation by substituting the V inside here. You do your differentiation. What does it mean? V is this one, it means you do double differentiation. D, dt, d, sorry. ds, dt is a double differentiation. So when you write d square s dt square, makes sense. So there's another presentation of acceleration in this case. So three equation, huh? one, two, three. Why these three equation is important in dynamic just now in one slide. How do you define a dynamic problem? You look at position, you look at velocity, you look at acceleration. This is position, this is velocity, this is acceleration. So you see there are three parameters that we are playing with. And time, so you deal with V, A, S, and T, all parameters. Make sense? Okay, so I think we, we, we stop here because the uh, other lecturer, they are looking at us already. Uh, Okay, we stop here. Um, in the linear, this one, first session, we are doing continuous motion. Uh, as on the top of the slide there, you see uh, there's a continuous motion. So later you'll see there's a incontinuous motion. Now we are at a very, very basic uh, derivation stage. Okay, so, I hope my the way of my teaching is is okay for you. Uh, if you think I speak I speak too slow, I can speed up. If you think I I teach very very fast, I can slow it down. Okay, just let me know. Okay, uh, is that okay? My my teaching for two of you very new to. Okay, yeah. So far my teaching okay. So. All right. So then uh, I will see you guys on Friday, uh, eight to ten p.m. Huh? Right. Okay, it is new here. All right, see you guys uh, on Friday.